Hey music makers, it's Dean. Welcome back to the studio. And today we are gonna be talking about how to mix high quality vocals on your phone. And we're gonna use the same techniques that I use here in the studio. And yet we're gonna do it all on our phone using stock sounds and plugins from GarageBand. So first we're gonna talk about proper setup and I'm gonna show you four things you can do to maximize the quality of your vocal. The first thing is actually to take off the case from your iPhone. And that's because the phone case blocks the microphone even just a little bit. So I I wanna take that off and make sure we're getting everything out of the way so we can maximize the clarity of our vocal. And number two, I wanna encourage you to always wear headphones when you're recording, and it helps to have headphones when you're mixing because you can hear with more detail. If you don't wear headphones while recording, the noise from all of your other tracks will bleed into your vocal recording and it'll just end up sounding really muddy and messy. And you can use really any old pair of headphones. They don't have to be fancy, but I do wanna say don't use the ones that have this little microphone attachment on them because GarageBand will default to this microphone instead of your phone's built-in microphone. And I've done testing and this microphone on your phone just sounds cleaner, it sounds fuller. So make sure that your headphones don't have this little microphone on it. Once you've got your headphones on and ready, the third thing I want you to do is to turn your monitor on. So let me go ahead and open a new track. I'm gonna click on voice and show you that the monitor button lives here in the bottom right. I can turn it on to hear myself as I record or I can turn it back off. And then while we're in this menu, I wanna show you that you can actually adjust some of the preset effects. So if you like to hear a little more reverb on your voice, you can do that. If you really like a lot of pitch control or auto-tune effect, you can turn that on and you can actually hear these in your monitor as you record. And for me, sometimes that helps me be creative, that helps me be confident as a singer. And then later, you can even go back and take that stuff out. It's not married to your track. So that's just a little tip for creativity as a singer. So now let's talk about the actual recording process process. The first thing I want to tell you is as you record, you'll want to hold the phone about six to 10 inches from your mouth about this far. And then you need to be mindful of your louder notes and your quieter notes. So if you get louder, you're going to pull away just a little bit or even turn your head to the side just a little bit. And if you're getting much quieter and more intimate, then you'll come in close. And this helps you get a more even balanced performance, which will be much easier to mix in the long run. Tip number two comes from something we do here in the studio, and that is to do lots of of takes until you get a take that you're really excited about and pleased with. Maybe that's three takes in, maybe that's 10 takes in, but it really is worth taking the time to do multiple takes until you find that one you're excited about because it's way easier to mix a good performance than it is to mix a mediocre performance. It will never sound as good as one that was well recorded and well performed. And while you're doing all of those takes, you're probably gonna wanna get familiar with the undo button. It lives on your screen right here and with one click you can undo your last recording and be ready for a new recording. So now that we've talked about proper setup and proper recording technique, I'm gonna go off screen, I'm gonna do several takes until I get one I'm excited about and then we'll come back and talk about the actual mixing of this vocal. All right, so now that I have a take recorded here, I'm gonna show you three ways that you can mix vocals here in GarageBand iOS and they're gonna start from the easiest and move to the more advanced. So the first and easiest way to mix vocals here in GarageBand is to use one-click presets. And you can find those one-click presets by first clicking on the microphone icon here. And next, you're gonna hit the blue dial in the top right of the screen. And here you see a menu with different kinds of vocal presets that you can choose from. Now I'm gonna start with the clean just to give you an idea of what we're working with, and then we'll try out some of the other ones. So not bad, but it's definitely a bit plain. And there's really two main presets that I like to try or like to test out. The first one is the dreamy vocal. So let's test that out. So it's pretty cool. It's really spacey, it's really ambient. The other one that I like to try here is the hard or the extreme tuning. So let's give that a go. And 
for you, that may not fit your song, but that's definitely an easy and quick way to get that T-Pain auto-tune effect. So I could show you others, but I don't feel like they're really that necessary. When are you gonna want a monster voice or robot voice? I mean, maybe you might want a telephone voice effect. This is kind of cool. La -da 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 -da. But as far as this one click menu goes, I'm either gonna be on clean if I want something super clean, or I'm gonna be testing out dreamy or the extreme tuning. So that is an easy way to mix vocals literally with one click. Now, the second way we can mix vocals in GarageBand iOS is to click this white dial again, which toggles back to this menu. And here you have some of the main parameters that you would wanna adjust on any vocal. And all you have to do is hold them down and slide them up or down to decide how much of each effect you want on your vocal. So let's go back to the beginning and see what it sounds like just with this stock sound on. So not bad for not even really clicking any buttons. So a few that I wanna draw your attention to are number one, the vocal hall. This is just another way to say reverb. This is a long tail reverb. And so if I crank that way up, you'll be able to hear that on the vocal. La -da 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 -da. So you can play around with how much or how little reverb you want, and depending on your song, you can choose what fits best with your sound and your style. The second knob I wanna show you is, of course, the pitch control knob. For some of you, you won't want any pitch control. Let's say you have more of a live sound or you just don't wanna hear that tuning. A second option would be to give it some pitch control, but not a lot, so that it is tuning the vocal and it's helping some of those notes that are a bit pitchy, but you can't actually hear it tuning. It sounds natural. And then for others, you you want that auto-tune, that T-Pain effect, and that's when you would crank it all the way up. For this example, I'm gonna turn it down just a bit to say a third of the way up, and let's give that a try. So I like that. It's helping rein in some of my notes, even just a little bit, which just makes it sound that much more professional. Another knob you might wanna experiment with is the drive knob here in the bottom left. And this is gonna add just a little bit of grit, a little bit of gain to the vocal. And you don't wanna add too much or it'll start to sound kind of intense, kind of distorted. But if you add just a little bit, it can add just a nice warmth and saturation to the vocal. So let's try it. La -da 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 -da. So yeah, I like that. Somewhere around there, just a little bit to add a little something extra to the vocal. Then the last knob I'm gonna point out here is the compressor knob here in the top right. And this is about making your loud parts quieter and your quiet parts louder. So if there's a lot of variation in the dynamics of your vocal and you wanna tame that down a little bit, then this would be a good knob to crank up. Also, if you have a more pop style vocal and you want every syllable to be heard really clearly, then you would start to crank this up a bit more. So I'm gonna hit play on this and just experiment with the compressor. La -da 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 -da. So you can hear when I crank the compressor, it does introduce a lot of background noise and that would be a problem, but we're gonna talk about how to address that background noise in the next section. And with that, let's move into the third way that you can mix vocals here in GarageBand iOS, and that is to use their plugins and do a manual mixing job on your vocal. So to do that, we're gonna hit this little icon here, which is actually a picture of a mixing board. And you'll see this mixing menu pop up, which you can scroll down. And I'm actually gonna start by going all the way down to the bottom and show you some of the master effects down here. I'm gonna start by adding a bit of master echo because I just really like the way an echo sounds within a recorded vocal. It helps fill out the space and just make it sound a little bit larger than life. So let's test that out. So 
So for me on this song, I want it pretty subtle, so maybe just a quarter or a third of the way up. And then I'm gonna move down to master reverb. And we already have some reverb here on the vocal hall, but something I like to do in the studio sometimes is to actually blend my reverbs. It just helps give it a more robust, full, luscious sound. And so I'm gonna turn this master reverb up just a little bit, not a ton, because I don't wanna wash out the vocal and make it hard to hear, but let's try just about a third of the way up and see how that sounds. La -da 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 -da. La -da 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 La -da 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 so pretty cool. It's starting to sound a lot more full and a lot more like it was recorded in a studio versus just in a bedroom on a phone. So now that we've covered master effects, let's actually scroll up and I want you to hit plugins and EQ. And this is where it starts to get really crazy and really fun. The first thing I like to do is actually turn on the noise gate here and I'm gonna pull it open by hitting the drop down arrow. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna help eliminate a lot of the background noise in the vocal, which is really handy if you're recording on a cell phone. So to show you, I'm actually gonna go back and solo this track so it's only the vocal playing. Hit plugins and EQ again, and let's test out the noise gate and see if we can hear it cutting out that background noise. La -da 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 -da. So that's on, let's turn it off. La -da 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 -da. So pretty powerful, right? It's amazing the difference that it makes. So before we move on from this noise gate, I wanna show you that the farther you bring it down, the less the noise gate is actually working. So if I bring it all the way down, it's not really working at all. If I bring it all the way up, it's gonna work so hard, it's gonna cut out your vocal and you can't hear anything. So the default sound is usually pretty accurate, but if you notice it cutting out part of your syllables, then you would simply drag it down just a little bit to make room for all of your syllables. And so just play around with it until you get that clean, nice, full vocal line, but yet no background noise. So now I'll hit up on this arrow and we're gonna go down to the compressor and open it up. And here I'm gonna do two simple moves. I don't wanna overcomplicate this or try and explain all the ins and outs of a compressor. So I'm just gonna show you. I'm gonna take my ratio from a 2.6 up to about a four or five. Let's just call it a five. And then I'm gonna take this gain knob and I'm gonna turn it up to a two. What that's gonna do, it's gonna give me a more full robust sound on the vocal. So let's give that a try. La -da 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 -da. And we'll try it with it off. La -da 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 -da. So it's very subtle, but it's adding little hints of warmth and color to the vocal. So I'm gonna close that up and we're gonna move down to effect EQ. And I don't really know what this does, honestly. So I'm gonna hit the edit button and I'm actually gonna get rid of this one and change it out for the flanger. Now the flanger is a really interesting plugin. It adds this real unique kind of grit to your vocal. So I'm gonna hit play on it and just play around and let you hear what it's doing to the vocal. La -da 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 -da. So again, I know it's pretty subtle, but that's kind of the art of mixing. It's a hundred little moves that make your vocal sound really good in the end. And so I like it when the mix is around 15% for this particular vocal. It just adds a little bit of grit, a little bit of unique character to the vocal that I like. So I'm gonna close up the flanger and we're gonna move on down. We're gonna skip the enhanced tuning because that's simply the pitch control knob, which you see over here. I'm gonna go down to overdrive now. And really this is the same thing as the knob on the right. And so you can see when I turn this knob, it's starting to change the tone of that. And so what I'm gonna do is just leave it around a two, two dBs of extra drive to the vocal. And we're just gonna leave it right there because again, it's adding just a little something to the character of the vocal. And here I'll open track reverb for you, but I'm not gonna change anything. I actually like the way the default reverb settings sound. And so I'm just gonna say leave it unless you really know what you're going for. Maybe the reverb time you want to be really long and ambient you can make that longer maybe you want it to sound like you're in a smaller room you could turn the reverb time down that kind of thing but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it for now and we're gonna move down to this visual EQ and first I'm gonna turn it on and then I'm gonna open it up just by clicking the button 
And then I'm actually gonna expand the window so we can really see what we're working with here. And here you can see we have three options, an orange, a green, and a purple option. So first I'm gonna take the orange option, the base option, and I'm gonna subtract down to minus five dBs. And what that's gonna do is cut out some of that low end mud, that low end uh, noise that isn't really needed for our voice. And it also makes room for the other instruments within the mix. The second thing I'm gonna do is go over to the purple or the treble band, and I'm gonna raise that up to a five, five dBs. And this is gonna add some brightness, some breathiness to the high end of our vocal, some sheen to that high end, which I think sounds really nice. You could even honestly take it almost all the way up to 10, but you don't wanna to go too high or it'll start to sound kind of shrill. So I'm gonna to stick to five just kind of as a good place to start. And then lastly, I'm gonna use the green mid-range band and I'm gonna go on a search, on a hunt for the ugliest sound that I can find in my voice in between about 200 and 1K. So I'm gonna hit play, break this up. So somewhere around 500 hertz is a place in my voice that is not so desirable. And so I wanna cut that out and I cut it out about four dBs. You could do between three and five dBs. And so now with those three moves, I'm gonna hit done. And now let's test it before the EQ and after the EQ. So here's EQ off. And here's EQ on. Did you hear some of the clarity that it added to the vocal? It really made it sound more studio-esque, which is something we're going for. So that's all of the plugins that I use to mix a vocal here in GarageBand iOS. And before we move on to background vocals, I wanna do a before and after on this vocal. So first, I'm gonna turn everything off and we're gonna listen to the before of the vocal. All right, then we're gonna turn everything back on and give that a listen. And I'm really pleased with the way it's turned out. So now let's talk about background vocals. What I'm gonna do is hit this block here to go back to the project view. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit that mix button just to shrink it down. And if I wanna mix or record more vocals, say background vocals, harmonies, or just some extra doubled vocals, what I will actually do to save myself time is double click the microphone icon and I will hit duplicate. And what that does is it actually creates another track with the exact same settings that we've already worked on. So I don't have to go through and do all of that again. It's all on the track already. But here's three moves that I do on almost every background vocal so that it doesn't compete with the lead vocal. Number one, I'm simply gonna turn its volume down a bit. Then number two, I'm actually gonna pan it out a bit to one side. And then the last thing I'll do is add more reverb to it, which I'm gonna do by hitting the little vocal icon here. And I'm gonna simply go over to the vocal hall on the right and just turn that up a bit. So that way this background vocal is gonna sound a bit more ambient, a bit more distant. And all of these moves again will help it not compete in the mix with that lead vocal, but they'll serve that lead vocal. And I'll repeat this process, whether it's two background vocals or 10. The only other note that I'll make is that I will actually alternate the panning on each background vocal. So I'll have one in the right, the next one in the left, the next one I might go even further right, the next one I might go even further left. If I had six, I would take the next one all the way out to the right and the next one all the way out to the left, that kind of thing, so that there's balance within the stereo spectrum. So that's all for this tutorial on mixing vocals in GarageBand iOS. If you have a question, be sure to leave it in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to it. And also I wanna let you know that I actually have a 25 part masterclass for GarageBand iOS. It's completely for those brand new beginners out there. If you're new to GarageBand, you wanna learn how to use each and every part of the program, well go check out the link in the description and you can find that course. So this has been Dean here at the studio and I will catch you in another video very soon.